Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Well, no, I, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, and it's just like I said in my email. So I ordered your muscle builder, and I'm excited to try it, but I do have a few questions. Yeah, uh, so first, exactly how do you take this stuff? Because there weren't any instructions. Injected into the pineal gland at the base of the skull. Oh, so I, I don't inject it into my, my butt? You're a bright man. Oh. Well, that's different. I'm mean, glad I asked. Next, um, so I came across some pictures online that look a lot like the ones on your site, except for they show like the whole body, including the face. And so the muscle builder didn't cause them to look like that, did it? No. Oh, <laughs> okay, so those are photoshopped. Oh, okay, good, good. Um. Lastly, and, and probably most importantly, is just that what I received doesn't look like the, the pictures on the website. Yeah, mine isn't so much green as it is like a really dark red and seems kind of thick. Like, if I didn't know better, you know, I, I would probably say that this looks like blood, you know? I mean, in, in fact. Yep. No, no, so that that tastes exactly like blood as well. So You'll know everything soon. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, well, no, that makes sense. Oh. Sorry, so is just a chemical reaction for me in direct sunlight too long? Yes. But it's still safe to take. Yes. <laughs> Great, that's all I needed to know. I have work to do. No, no, thanks again for your time. Bye. All right, well, I feel better about you now. But I mean, what's the worst that can really happen? It tastes a lot like blood though. I think it's right here. Here goes nothing. Yo, 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 what's the haps? Yeah, just trying it out, I don't know. Didn't, didn't really fit me, I don't think. So, uh, how was your summer? Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. So, you're, you're not gonna ask me about my summer? No, that's cool. I mean, you know, I, I thought we kind of had something here. I asked you about yours, the polite thing to do would be ask me about mine, but you know, uh, that's fine. I actually, I didn't want to discuss it anyways. I don't really want to talk about it. So, in that case, we'll just get straight into today's movie, The Immortalizer. The Immortalizer came out on June 11, 1989 in Italy, but didn't actually hit the States until August 29, 1990. It's about a mad scientist that's figured out a way to swap old people's brains into younger bodies. It runs for 96 minutes. It was directed by Joel Bender. You probably recognize him from his work on two episodes of Sweet Valley High. Oh, come on, I know you watched it. You probably said it was your sister, but it was you. Nobody's judging you here. The Wakefield twins were very engaging. Oh, um, my sister used to watch it. Anyways, if you're ready, the doctor is in. It starts off with a typical scene after someone eats Taco Bell. <laughs> Before we meet Dr. Divine, played by Ron Ray, Say Yes is on his resume. And the screaming here does get a little intense, so I suggest turning the volume down if you watch this. Then we meet Blah Greg, played by Chris Crone, or Crony. Crone sounds better. He also did one episode of Houston Nights, and his unlikable brother Daryl, played by Gre... Gre... I can't be right. Greg Jujan Rocher? All right. He was also in Psycho Cop. We find out that Daryl and the blonde are on a date, and for some reason, he thinks he's getting lucky. I know she's hot. I know it. I gotta tell you, this guy is not a high-class guy. The blonde is cold and wants to take a shortcut, so down the seedy alley they go, where they run into Dave Bautista and his friend. And what they lack in conversation skills, they make up for with this. This unlucky cop shows up and finds out they're invincible. So I think this is an accurate reenactment of roid raging, right? The foursome and the muscle get rounded up and the cop gets even unluckier. So 
Did he just run over his head? Yep, yeah, he sure did. Okay, so this guy scoops him up and puts him in the back with the others. Greg wakes up and, okay, so wait a second. They just ran over the cop's head and they even had a little pop with it. This head seems way too round for being just ran over. I mean, okay, so there's just no attention to detail on that one. Even though Greg is conscious, he's not able to escape. And they get taken to this house, which is where we meet Dr. Timmons, played by Steve Jamieson? Jamieson? It's literally spelled Jamieson. J-A-M-I-E-S-O-N, Jamieson, yeah. Who is also in Bonsai Runner. We also see Dr. Devine from the beginning, and we find out what the clinic is all about. Well, welcome to the Sea View Aging Therapy Clinic. Before we meet Nurse Blaine, played by Melody Patterson. She was in all 65 episodes of F Troop. We find out Timmins has a bit of a history. Oh, your little brush with the medical board? Actually, that's what I liked about you. And he's not picky. For the right money, I'll do anything from lobotomies on down. After, we see how the muscle is stored away, and that these guys apparently bring people to meet death for some booze. And it's only like one bottle for the both of them. I mean, they don't even each get their own bottle. Not really much else to say about that, I guess. Once alone, Greg tries to wake up the others with no luck. Nurse Blaine comes in to put on the gowns, and I do like that this part is very realistic. Like, he's laying there looking, right? I mean, knowing that he might get caught at any time. But he has to look. That Now, that's realism. When there's free boobs about you, I mean, you, you have to look. Once Blaine is gone, he helps out his date slash girlfriend by unhooking the IV. He also tries to get the attention of the nosy neighbor across the street, but she doesn't respond. So Greg makes the doctors think that he's escaped. As Blaine finishes preparing the others, Greg decides to run out right in front of her. He then gets chased around the house, a la the Three Stooges, before he makes a dramatic exit. He tries his luck with the car in the driveway, but surprise, surprise, the keys aren't in it. Then he does his best Chuck Norris to get away and makes his way to this very, very legit police station, which happens to be closed, you know, as they often are, so he puts out a call and waits. He tries to explain what happened, but it falls on deaf ears. You seem like a bright young kid. Why do you want to mess with drugs at your age, huh? Also, I like how the sheriff doesn't need keys to open up the jail cell. Like, he just, whoop, there you go. I mean, I feel like Greg could probably just walk out there. Cut to the doctors, and we find out that Blaine and Divine are a thing. Clean him up, he's a mess. Yes, dear. Don't call me that while we're working. We also see that they've added some lady muscle to the monster squad and decide to name her. <laughs> yeah, Queenie, that's it. <laughs> One of the henchmen decides to take advantage of the situation and starts to pull a real Brock Turner before a customer comes in to pick out her new body. And despite the fact that... Wouldn't you like to see the blonde pe Blondes do have more fun. She picks out Greg's girlfriend, or date, I'm not entirely sure. Back at the jail, the sheriff comes in just really chewing that gum. I mean, can you imagine living with someone who chews like that? Yeah, well, I know something. Okay, so this is a public service announcement. Whether chewing gum or food, close your damn mouth. That is all. The sheriff begrudgingly agrees to have Greg show him the clinic, but of course there's no proof, and the sheriff is still just going at that gum. They look around more, but we see that they were never gonna find his friends. And I have to say that throughout this whole thing, you never hear any urgency in Greg's voice. Like, he just keeps saying stuff in like a, oh, shucks kind of way, you know? It's... Sheriff, there's no time to lose. We've got to get my friends out of there. I don't know. Bad acting, maybe? Bad directing? I don't know. Sheriff, you've got to let me out of here. They're going to kill my friends. It's not believable either way. Divine comes out saying Greg broke in looking for drugs and offers to observe him for the sheriff. But I can't. <sighs> if he escaped, it'd be my ass in a sling. Having seen enough, the sheriff takes Greg away, but, but Greg decides to get away, and is the sheriff still chewing that gum after getting hit in the nuts? Son of a bitch. Okay, he's still getting after that gum. I'll tell you something. If the sheriff is as hard on crime as he is on that piece of gum, that's one hell of a safe city. I mean, aside from this clinic, where they swap brains and all. Greg is able to hide and goes to talk to the neighbor across the street. Who's packing heat, by the way? She decides to help Greg because... 
These are my sons. I haven't seen him since that clinic opened, and I think they had something to do with his disappearance. And they come up with a plan. Hold on, you're not going over there. Oh, yes I am, I... Cut back to the doctors, and we see Divine injecting some Mountain Dew Pineal Blast into Daryl, which he created, by the way, but it doesn't take. Turns out that that just happens sometimes. Unfortunately, it affects about one out of every ten, like that. Then they test Timmons to see if he's up to the task. Oh, I don't know, fellas. It's... I thought you wanted to be a millionaire. He passes, but they decide to wait until surgery to inject her. Before surgery begins, Blaine tells Divine... She's been selected by a client. I don't care. I want her. Because you want her. And then Divine says something that anyone who's been in a relationship for years thinks, at least at some point. I know you. We've been together far too long. Yes. Perhaps. And his follow-up would be, Well, I mean, you said it first. And now while that is true, she would still get pissed, you know, because that's what happens. Or so I've heard. Then we find out... This happened once before, remember? Oh yes, I remember. The chick makes a break for it, and Blaine uses it to her advantage. Now she's damaged goods. Oh really? What a shame. Then we get to the nitty gritty and see the brain swap being done on the blonde now. And while I'm no doctor, that just doesn't look like it's gonna work. You know, I mean, you can't just plop a brain into the skull and have it work. We re grabbed the nerve of the brain stem back onto the brain. Ah, okay, uh, I guess, I guess I stand corrected. Divine's over there making me look like an asshole. Touche, Divine. Touche. The neighbor plays dress up and gets some info. Well, Greg listens in. It's a flat fee. One million dollars. But she's not as sneaky as she thinks she is. Old Boozy Joe wanders close by, wearing scrubs for some reason. I mean, he wasn't helping with the surgery, so I guess he just wanted to play dress up as well. She finds the brain stash, but doesn't tell Greg. Then she finds the monster hole. It's kind of like a reverse glory hole. And Daryl, who's feeling a bit peckish and needs a snack. While this is happening, the other henchman wakes up and ends up losing his cattle prod. Greg hears everything. Agnes, can you hear me? Well, no, dipshit. I mean, if you can hear her, that means her walkies button is pushed down, so you can't get through. Then the henchman ends up in the monster hole, and it doesn't end well for him. Although, I don't know why he gets the electricity special effect when none of the muscle did. Daryl chases off Boozy Joe, and he gets back up. Greg takes the neighbor's gun and heads over. Well, now Daryl gets the special effects too. Did I just not notice it before? Oh, yeah, all right, yeah. Okay, yeah, apparently I just didn't see it. So, I guess I'm moving on. The doctors find out someone is listening in, and they decide to finish the surgery. What if somebody shows up? <sighs> In that case, of course, we'll be ready for them. Even after Greg shoots his way in. Two of the docs see that it's Greg who broke in, and he ends up on a trap door. Classic move. At least if this was Batman. You know, it does make me wonder, though. So if you have to pay someone to install the trap door, right? And I'm sure it's not cheap. And that's a very specific thing to add in. Like, when do you actually see using it? Like, how often do you think you'll need to drop someone into the monster pit via the living room floor? And I won't even get into what the guy installing the trapdoor was thinking during the install. Greg finds Daryl and manages to kill the lady muscle, and we find out how. Only way to kill one is make it lose a massive amount of blood very quickly. He saves himself by going into a cell and tries to get through to Daryl, but... They have no memory? No, not really. We also see that maybe Timmons is second-guessing sticking with the doctors? Too bad. Good TV's hard to find. But maybe not. I don't know, because they bust out a bunch more surgeries. But at least we get to see what they do with the bodies. Also, why are the muscle faces all jacked up, but Daryl's isn't? Because no way any customers would have picked guys with messed up faces to switch bodies with. Doesn't make any sense. Then Timmons takes over the surgeries, and his skills really impress Divine, who reveals his plan all along with Timmons. I need someone to carry on as me. You mean for you? No. We see the lady who ended up in the blonde's body, and I'm sure they did this to really sell it, but how in the hell would her voice be the same? There's no pain, and my arthritis is gone. Well, of course. So I'm fine with the brain swap, and I'm fine with her being able to move around just fine, but not with the voicing, all right? It's too much. You hear me? It's too much. 
Also on the dock, I'll use this straight up spikes the lens. It's unknown why they haven't break the fourth wall, but there it is, I guess. Just decided to throw it in there. Cut back to surgery and we see the doc did something. Rudy, you shouldn't have done that. I'm a scientist, Monica. I love to experiment. Nah, I'm guessing we'll find out later. Oh, and these two are also banging. He'll be unconscious for at least five hours. We have plenty of time. Blaine tries talking him into giving her the chick's body, but then she does say just the right thing. Just think of the good times that you and I will have when I'm in her body. I mean, she does make a good point, you know? You can't argue with logic. The last henchman comes into the monster hole to torment Greg a little bit, but then Daryl comes to his aid. <laughs> as ridiculous as this death is, I mean, it is funny that they have the gun fire while stabbing the guy and no one's pulling the trigger. Either way, Daryl still doesn't want to talk. Greg manages to grab the keys and makes a break for it while the monsters are eating, but he takes a little too long and Daryl has to help him out again, which also reveals the exit. Back inside, I guess the monsters make up and go on a hunt. Just about to start surgery, they hear the monsters and end up having to leave, but Blaine isn't ready to give up yet. The monsters find one of the clients and decide to give him a physical. Eh? Eh? Then they catch up to the doc and he holds them off for a little while. He actually does a pretty good job. He takes out two of them. He even grinds up their bodies. Greg hits up the neighbor's house for supplies and... Let me speak to Sheriff Gantry. Back at the clinic, he comes across Divine. Well, he looks like Divine anyways. What have they done to my body? I'll kill him. But Greg isn't feeling very sympathetic. Can't say I blame him. While admiring the meat shoot, the other doc sneaks up on Greg and gets the shotgun. And Greg ends up taking a ride. Daryl comes in and beats the ever-loving hell out of the dock, but it does give Greg enough time to get out of the shred zone. He ends up finding Blaine and... And I just love how he clocks her here. Like, he doesn't even wait for her to look. He's just like, tap, tap, nothing. <laughs> I just, I don't know. But she pops up right back up. So either Blaine is tough as nails or Greg hits like a little kid. Because not looking and unsuspecting, she should have been straight knocked out. Greg does manage to grab the chick and they try to hide from the dock, but end up being cornered. That is until Daryl shows up again and it's Dyson time. And I do like how this chick wakes up just in time to see a human going into the meat grinder. You know, as her, you'd have to be imagining absolutely horrid scenarios if this is what you wake up to, especially since Greg doesn't seem mortified by it either. He's just like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. He's dead now. Blaine decides to finally cut her losses just as Divine wakes up. Cut to the cops escorting Timmons out. I tell you, I'm not him. My name is Jerry Timmons. He's taken my body. Okay. But obviously they're never gonna believe him. And the sheriff is still smacking at that gum. Okay. Greg tries to explain to him that Divine isn't Divine, but you know, he doesn't believe him. Then we get another lens spike. You don't get it! You just don't get it! And again, I don't know why they threw this in here. Like, it definitely seems unnecessary. And I don't, it just, they do it twice and for no reason it seems. It's weird. We time travel a little and end up seeing that Divine has set up shop again and Blaine is gonna get her new body. Nurse Blaine is going to love you. Who wants them? Fun facts. Yeah. Can't hear you, but I'm assuming you guys. This was Melody Patterson's last film. She just stopped acting. She didn't pass away until 2015. The Lady Muscle, or Queenie, was played by Ray Hollett, or Hollett. You might remember her as Zap on American Gladiators. God, he's a love watching that show. To date, there is still no way to actually swap brains like this. Uh, I guess we'll just have to wait a little longer. So, are you checking out The Immortalizer? You know, it's not a bad flick, it's just, it kind of walks a line. Like, it feels campy with certain things, but then other things seem like it's trying to be serious. So I don't fully have a grasp on this. Like, it's not great. You know, it's not bad to pass the time. It's just weird, like the lens spiking, I mean, like looking straight at the camera. Stuff like that, it's just interesting. And um, I don't know, like, it's not bad, 
but I wouldn't necessarily say it's a must watch. No, I, it's not a must watch, but it's not horrible. I've seen worse. Anyways, if you do want to watch it, I'll put a link in the description where you can check it out for free. Normally I would say go watch my last video, but uh, yeah, well, what do you know? That one's got taken down because of a copyright strike, so uh, I can't say that. Uh, yeah, that's a whole thing. Uh, anyways, I guess uh, go check this video out. This one could use some love, so I think that's all I got for you today, and uh, yeah, that's all I got for you today.